Up until four days ago, we were the speakeasy of speakers. Yeah. Now, now we're coming out. This is the room that won for best theater last year. Nice. At Acedia, top of the line best theater. Sure. All Grimani system speakers in here. Last night, the, the award ceremony gave us the best theater again. All Grimani system speakers. Yeah. The year before we won with again a, a system we designed and we supplied the speakers. Yeah. And the year before that, same thing. Sure. sure. All right, all right, all right. We're the first people to try to pull this off at yeah. a show. This is the way to go. Benefit of this, why am I so excited? Yeah. I don't sell network switches. Right. I don't sell network cables. Sure. I'm excited because... Hey guys, we are here at Cedia 2023, and I am incredibly excited because I've got the legendary Anthony Gramani. Anthony, it's been a fun, fun day hanging out with you, hearing this incredible system that you've designed and brought your own speakers. We're gonna talk you through everything about this room, but kind of give us a walkthrough of who you are for my audience that may not be, um, you know, understand who you are and what you do and bring to the table, especially in the home theater space. Yeah, thanks, Michael. Um, who am I? I'm, I am just a guy who's been doing this for 40 years. Yeah. Um, I'm passionate about it. I have uh, an engineering background and also a music background. Um, studied music growing up. My, my dad was an audio engineer. It's sort of in the, in the blood. Yeah. Um, now, how did I get into this? I never actually thought I'd be working in this amazing field. I never thought I'd have 40 years of fun doing this. I thought I would go, like a lot of people, it would be just a passion, a hobby. Absolutely. Well, I was lucky enough right out of college to get, to get a job at Dolby, working in the division that, that developed and launched Dolby Surround and Dolby Surround Pro Logic in the early days, nice. in 84, yeah. 85, 86. That's so when going, I started coming up in the Dolby Pro Logic right, days, right. yeah. Way in the early days. Um, and uh, so, you know, started there. I started playing with it. The, my, my first home theater was literally in 1985. Yeah. And uh, I remember I actually have pictures of it. A magazine from Japan came over to film this, you know, okay, but very early, early generation sure. theater with a laser disc player, right? right, And a 30 inch TV and these six speakers around it was really, really pretty crazy. Um, so I spent five years at Dolby. And then I was recruited by, by Lucasfilm to launch the home THX program. Yeah. So in 1990, I joined Lucasfilm to put in place all of the bones of what would be a home THX system. Uh, the technology was being put together by Tom Holman. Sure. And I, my job was to go turn it into something productizable, go yeah. license it, and spend 10 years doing that. And then uh, 24 years ago, I decided to go off on my own and start a company that designs high quality home theaters. Sure. And we've done a thousand projects in 24 years, which is amazing. insane. That's amazing. Some, sometimes like I'll step through our server looking for you know old dot data and I'll see these theaters we designed 20 years ago, 23 years ago, sure. and I was like all proud of them then. And then I go, wow, we thought that was good. Look at what we're doing now. Right. And yeah. so this is an example of the kinds of things we do, um, which is to get data from the architect, get data from the client, uh, get data from the integrator, the end user, whatever, right. and figure out using science and experience what it's going to take to turn this space into an absolutely killer theater, kind of yeah. like what you heard over here. Absolutely. So you design systems. I mean, right. so you design small, medium, large, probably even massive home theaters. Yeah. And really, these are all custom homes and all custom builds, correct? Yeah, everyone is different. Um, there are people who there are people who say, well, isn't this sort of the same as the last one you did? It's like, well, it, they're all custom. Every room's a little different where the doors are, what the client wants, what the sound system, the sure. video system. Every one of them is different. So we, we, we use existing knowledge base. Right. It's not like we're reinventing. Not everything right. is, a, is a science project. Sure. But every one of them has to be re, refigured out, recalculated. Um, I talk sometimes in analogies, and sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. But it's sort of like a wedding planner. Okay. Every wedding is different. Right. Every couple is different. Every venue is different. Every food requirement is different. A wedding planner is never just cookie cuttering it, right? Sure. Uh, there was a wedding here at Cedia yesterday. I saw I mean, that. Like, that was crazy. Do you yeah. think a wedding planner could have figured this no. one out? No, there's a completely different story. So Phenomenal. we're sort of like a wedding planner of home theater, sure. right? Is that analogy working yeah, for you? Uh, 100%. Yeah, 100%. Okay. Um, and so everyone is different. Every one of them, we have to look deeply into the client requirements. Yeah 
the space that's there, the architecture, the interior design requirements, and then do a whole bunch of physics and math prediction. Yeah. We have this massive calculation spreadsheet, sure. 30 pages of all of this different nerdy math that in the end tells us, okay, we're going to have to use this, put that here, put this speaker here, et cetera, et cetera. And that's what we did for the room here. So this is an example of a plan set uh, we did for this particular room. Right, awesome. And, uh, uh, and I'm looking for the clicker. Hold on. Oh, oh. So you, you put mine in. Cool. Excellent. Hey, look at that. It works. It's amazing. <laughs> so I'm just going to quickly uh, uh, step you through the pages. And this is a this is an example of what we do for any client. In this nice. case, the client was us. Right. Yeah. Um, and uh, th these just show some renderings of where we place things. But I think you can see in here, we we have this footprint, right. which is the booth. As, as provided by the CDA contractor, sure. the vendor does that. And in there we figured out, well, where can we put the seats? How right. big should the screen be? What speakers should we use? Sure. What placement. acoustical treatments, all the placement. Yeah. And it's not random. There's Again, there's all of these rules and math Sorry. that dictate it. Uh, some of those rules and math, interesting, have just been announced as a CDA standard called RP22. Okay. I was very involved in that committee. Sure. They basically say, hey, follow this Bible, follow all these things, right. these 150 pages of data, and you'll be able to design a theater. That's yeah. a pretty intense task. Nice, yeah. um, but I'll, I'll, I'll just click through this really quickly. We, we generate all of the plans with sure. all of the dimensions, all the information that the team involved in putting this together, whether right. it's, a, it's a DIYer or somebody working with an integrator. Sure. You know, we're telling them, look, you got to put this here and you got to put that there. And, and every one of these placements and devices and choices yeah. is based on predictive math, on modeling, on experience of a thousand We're guessing rooms. here. We know exactly guessing. where you need diffusion, where yeah. we need absorption, and where right. we need to place these speakers based on angles and, like you said, math. Right. So let me push this to the extreme case. If you're a DIYer, you can play around. I've got clients, they, they're taking five years to slowly, slowly get get through. There's a, a big fan of you um, in, in California, I don't know if I can mention names, but there's a big fan of yours who watches you all the time, sure. who literally took three to four years doing trial and error to get to an excellent theater, just yeah. by trial and error. Right, sure. we, did, we don't have four years. Right, we yeah. had two and a half days. Yeah to put this together. Sure. So in two and a half days, we showed up you know, with our crates full of gear, yep. and we put it all exactly per how it had to be tuned it to the standards, and then you heard that. We didn't, we didn't have an opportunity to do any changes of yeah. placement. There's no time. Correct. The show starts at 9 o'clock on Thursday, That's right. and at that point, boom, it all worked. It's go time. Well, Anthony, we had a chance to hear this incredible system. What you guys may not know is, Anthony, you not only design home theaters, but you've got your own speaker line. I would love to kind of walk through what do you offer there and then also what's in the room that you designed here at CDA 2023. Yeah, absolutely. So somebody asked me during a presentation yesterday, uh, hey, what possessed you to want to make speakers? You yeah. were like designing rooms. You win a, uh, we won another award this year for best theater. Congratulations. On a room we designed and we did that the year before and the year before. And so it's like, aren't you just happy enough doing that? It's like, well, yeah. But, um, so I, I mentioned we've done a thousand theaters. 100%. By about theater 800, right. uh, my chief engineer and I started to go, started to kind of pine for something new in loudspeakers, something that would allow us better predictability, right. better quality, more efficiency, better coverage. Yeah. So you didn't hear that in this room because you yeah. didn't move around. But yeah. the sound you heard is the same at all of those seats. Sure, because we've got multiple locations. Right. We've got mom and dad and sister and brother and your friend. And your we don't friends. want just one person getting a great experience. Exactly. We want everybody to have a right. really immersive experience. Right. So if you're building a theater and you're, you know, you've got eight seats and you're inviting seven of your, your best friends, yeah. you want them to all have a great impressive experience. It makes you look good, yeah. right? Sure. So we were finding a bunch of issues with speakers on the market. Um, and in no, no particular order, the, one of the things that was bothering us a lot with traditional speaker design, which is usually made, comes from two-channel audio in most cases. You look at most speaker manufacturers that have been around for a while, they come from a background of making really good two-channel stereo speakers. Sure. And in the world of two-channel, you put the two speakers on, you point them at you, you sit in the middle, you get your glass of whatever you're drinking, right. and you enjoy the music. 
So fine, except that those speakers all tend to have a hot spot, right? They sound good right in the middle and right. then you go a bit off axis sure. and they don't quite work. Well, it changes so, things. If you're in your main seat and you're enjoying it, right. uh, the person sitting over there is outside of the hot spot. Sure. And it just doesn't work. Yeah. Um, if any, have, have you ever watched screens that are, you know, this screen's pretty uniform, sure. right? Yeah. Have you ever watched screens with, that have a hot spot in the middle? Oh, yeah, yeah. It doesn't look natural, yeah. right? It distracts you from it's it. It's distracting. Yeah. So at some point in the movie, especially, yeah. as, this is a, to me, it's an important analogy of picture to sound. Sure. Sound is sometimes hard to understand because it's not really visual, but you're watching a movie, it's all good. You're, on a, you're watching a screen that has a hot spot, either because it's a high gain screen or whatever reason, sure. and it's all good. And then there's a bright scene and the screen gets really bright, and you see this halo in the middle, right, yeah. and suddenly you notice the halo, yeah. consciously. Yeah, it pulls you out of that movie experience. Exactly. Yeah. The director's intent yeah. in a movie is to suck you in in the first 10 right. seconds, and for the next two hours, you're gone. Yes, sir. And when, when you come back from that trip, it's fantastic, right? right? I mean, Absolutely. We, we've all had that experience of being in a movie, and you're like, totally transported. Absolutely. If in a scene in a movie, 10 minutes into it, there's a bright, hot spot, yeah. you're like, yeah. Okay, I'm, I'm in I'm a in, movie I'm, theater now, I, or I'm in my theater. I'm, ba I'm yep. back in my seat. Back. That's correct. That's correct. Sound is the same. Yes, sir. Your auditory system notices hot spots. Yeah. It's a it's a long, complicated yeah, yeah. explanation, but psycho is really acoustic. intuitive and really complex. Well, you know what it says is that's not real. Yeah. Just the same way as your eyes seeing that hot spot, it's listening to that, and uh, and your general registration is like, yeah, I'm listening to speakers. Sure. No, no, no. We want you to stay in the movie, dude. Not fall down and look at your speakers. Yeah. So that was one thing we were looking for, speakers that just didn't have those hot spots. Right. So we invented and designed a whole new technology with a special waveguide that I'll show you in a minute yeah. that resolves that. Awesome. So that was one thing. And then there's a whole litany of other things we wanted. Sure. So there's a little bit more of a backstory. We actually went to some speaker manufacturers that we were used to working with and said, hey, we would love this. Right. Will you do this? Sure. And we talked to one, and they're like, yeah. We talked to another one, they're like, yeah. We're kind of doing our like, own thing, we're, right? we're fine. Nobody, yeah. Nobody's asking for it. Yeah. No one's asking for it. It's like, Interesting. well, I know, but we're asking. You know, we're, we're like, we're doing these rooms, and we think that if you did this, it would all work better. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm kind of, uh, sometimes I'm a little sarcastic when I talk. They were like, get off my lawn. <laughs> like, nice, get out of here. Right, sure. that, it was never quite yeah, that way. Yeah, sure. But, uh, this was like a three-year process of asking, and then we decided we're going to just do it ourselves. Make your own speaker. And so we started, you know, tiptoeing. We made one version, and then we made another speaker. And uh, I sometimes joke that we kept it sort of a secret. And yeah. some of it was, well, let's just ease into it. Yeah. Let's not let's not blast out without controlling all the factors. Sure. Now five, actually six years into it. We're, we're ready to get out and tell the world we got a line of speakers yeah. from really big to really small sure. that matches your needs, that has this wonderful open sound field with a wide sound yeah. spot, really good quality, and that's what they look like. Let's go over here. So Anthony, I see two speakers of yours that you've designed, you've manufactured. Walk us through what this is, and we actually heard this part of the system inside this room, and it's phenomenal. Tell us about it. Thank you, yeah. Um, this is an interesting stack. It shows the entire range. Uh, there's actually 15 different products in the line. Okay. But I'm, I'm showing you here from the biggest one called the Rixos XL to the Rixos S. Okay. So we have a, a line. It's, it's really hard to follow. Check this out. The Rixos XL is the biggest speaker. Sure. And then we go L. Right. M. No and way. S. <laughs> I love it. Do you detect I, the trend? I love it when a a brand makes it simple for me to know what models are right, what. Right. So now the interesting thing about this um, is that the sound quality of this product, the yeah. big, big bad boy, sure. is exactly the same as this. Yeah. So like, why do we have a small one? Why do we have a big one? Sure. Well, this one plays about 30 dB louder than this one. Right, sure. Bigger where, room. Bigger room. Where yeah. would you use this? Well, when you need more horsepower. Yeah. So we're like, like we're this. kind of like an engine manufacturer that makes great engines sure. from 150 horsepower to 1,000 horsepower. Yeah. Pick the one you need to drive sure. your car. Um, so um, this is what you would use. Um, and there's a few versions of this, some of right. which are shallower and stuff there sure. for different use cases. But you would use a set of these across the front in like a 250 square foot sure. room, a small room. Absolutely. Um, or a slightly bigger room if you don't like to play very loud, which okay. is a really bad idea. Right, yeah, yeah. Um, so you would use those. 
Where would you use this? Well, if you have a theater that's 30, 40 feet long, sure. and you and you like it strong, oh, yeah. like this is what you would use. Yeah. And it's 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 basically sound pressure level. Otherwise, the technology throughout is very sure. very similar. And that's awesome to know because if somebody wanted to even just build a two-channel system with yep. two of these speakers, that they yep. don't have a massive room, they don't necessarily need yep. massive speakers. Yep. Unless they just want you know the best that you have to offer. But that's great to know that you're not cutting corners when you get smaller. No, not not at all. Um, so yeah, we actually have a few clients uh, that do that do two channel with a pair of these with sure. a little subwoofer. Yeah. Um, somewhere here, there's a grill. Hey, watch out! If this was your two channel system, sure. you would do this. And we have a client just got one of these in Silicon Valley. The guy can buy anything he wants. Yeah. He's, he's doing great. Yeah. Um, and he has a pair of these on a the stand. Nice. Has the two little subwoofers sitting around, sure. and he just rocks out. He loves yeah. it. And then outside his two channel room, he has a full theater with our speakers, which is kind of cool. So. Um, You'll notice that these look a little yeah, different. Yeah, this, this is right? super interesting. Tell me yeah. about this. So, a, a traditional speaker today, you would normally see a woofer and a tweeter. Yeah. A tweeter is like this little, usually little dome thing about sure. this big that would go in here. This looks totally different. 100%. And what's this about? So, it goes back to the need. A regular woofer tweeter speaker, normal, you know, two way box with a little one inch tweeter over here, right. has a hot spot. Yeah. Okay. So, you listen to it right in front, it sounds good. Right. Then you move off, and it's like, Ooh, it starts to lose upper mids sure. and high frequency. Yeah. Not everything. It starts it to lose. Kind of starts it. getting dull. It starts getting dull. The dialogue starts to get a little soft. The yeah. quality of strings. Um, if you like really crunchy electric guitars, yeah. you go from ring to like a little soft. Sure. It's like no, no, no. Don't turn my my Led Zeppelin into right. uh, into <laughs> classical music. I don't want that. Um, so. Well, that was one of the first things we were trying to do is to produce the, the speakers that, that had a really nice wide sure. even coverage that gives you a wider sweet spot. Right. So we tried with regular tweeters and things and it couldn't get there. So um, our chief engineer Manny invented this crazy looking thing. Yeah. It looks like a horn. I love it. But it's not actually a horn. It's a wave guide. Sure. It guides the waves of sure. the tweeter to You're telling open it where them to go up. instead yeah. of just say send it wherever you want exactly. it to go. So interesting thing about a regular traditional tweeter is, you know, they spray sound out, but if you actually uh, did a video of the sound bubble over frequencies, and you actually looked at how it worked, it would usually start pretty wide, and then it may go a bit like this, and at some point it's starting to constrict, and then develop little side lobes. It's not even. Yeah. Same thing with the woofer at its upper frequencies, like around one kilohertz, it's starting to constrict a little bit, sure. and it gets weird. Yeah. So that means that if you sit off axis, it just doesn't sound right. And so your buddy that's sitting in the front left of the theater is yeah. hearing dialogue that's a little soft. I'm right? smiling in the middle. He doesn't have as big of a grin as I do. Right. right. Yeah. So uh, there's a tweeter in there. In the case of this speaker, it's a high quality audiophile tweeter from Audax in France. Okay. You know, made in the mountains of France where they drink wine and then they make a tweeter. <laughs> then they eat cheese and then they make a tweeter. So no. uh, it's not what. I don't think that's what maybe that's <laughs> maybe knows? that's the Who secret. Knows? I don't yeah. know. Um, and I like wine and cheese, right? Yeah. Um, so there's a tweeter in there that's firing down into oh, yeah, I see it. this little yeah. series of yeah. shapes. It's very complex. Sure. There's a pattern that covers the the whole geometry and design of all of this. Right. But the tweeter's firing down into this this little cavity that's taking the waves and redirecting them progressively at all frequencies right. so that it just spreads evenly from where the tweeter starts at one kilohertz. Yeah which is lower than most tweeters, I'll get sure. to that in a second. Yeah. All the way out to 20 kilohertz, it's just like covering yeah. from, from on axis all the way out to 70 degrees, it doesn't change. Yeah. So now I'm gonna get a little techie. All right, go for it. How do you hear this? For your speakers or our speakers or anybody else's? It's, we normally, are, the speaker industry has all these complex analysis systems. You either have an anechoic chamber sure. or a clipple system, Correct. where you, you, know, you measure all the way around, it's really right. complicated. Yeah, sure. But there's a really easy way to do it, guess what? You play pink noise in the speaker, which you can get just about anywhere. You can sure. download a file off the internet, you right. can play it using REW, okay. and you just listen to the pink noise in front, yeah. and then, then you, you just move walk over around. and see what happens. It's like, don't don't Use walk this. in a line, right? You have to go in a, in a, like a little curve like, a like that, okay. and you listen. And um, your viewers, I, right now, I want you to all go get some pink noise and listen to your speakers, and right. you'll notice as you start to go off and say, whoa. See what happens, that top end, the mid-range Top end and mid-range. The, the lower, the mid and mid-base and base is not going to change. Yeah, sure. The mid-highs is not going to change, but the top end and the up, upper mid-range okay. is going to change. Yeah. And you're going to notice a hot spot. Then you can switch over to, you know, put on some music and you'll notice a hot spot. 
love it. And that's the beginning of the journey of like, ooh, something is a little funky. Right. I'm going to say one more thing about this. Sure. It is, it is obvious that you want to cover all the people in the room evenly, yeah. right? What's less obvious and equally important is that what you're sending out into the room, what's going out to the walls and the ceiling and floor, needs to be about the same sound character as the direct sound. Mm -hmm. So that when you hear the direct sound from the speaker Correct. to you, and then a, a, a reflection a little later, yeah. Yeah. it's the same pattern, sure. just coming later, lower from a different direction. Right. If the pattern's different, your brain is sort of like, well, I just heard this sound directly, right. and then I'm hearing this reflection of from over there and another one from over there, and they're a little different. Sure. What's the deal? So yeah. it actually causes some confusion on yeah. your psychoacoustic process. It kind of sounds process. muffled, it doesn't sound clear, I would imagine, right? Well, it's, it's actually two parts. So. Um, uh, people don't realize this, but at a typical seating distance in a, in a listening room, you're actually hearing more reflected energy coming from all the wall, ceiling, floor sure. than direct sound. Yeah. So what you're really hearing is a sound power, what's called the sound power of the speaker. Okay. The net bubble that goes out into the room and goes back into your ears. If that's not smooth, yeah. you're hearing something not so good. So, sure. so the sound's a bit muffled. Sure. But then further than that, your brain is always trying to figure out where's the direct sound? Yeah. And what's a reflection? And that's based on patterns. You're like looking, like, okay, I, I, I first got this one, sure. this one's later. If the reflection is not almost identical or very similar to the direct sound, it's harder for your brain to detect which is which. Sure. So when you have speakers that send an off-axis sound that's vastly different to the direct sound, yeah. uh, the imaging suffers. Even if, the, even if you're in the beam of the speaker, even sure. if you point it in, the imaging is not as tight Still because off. your brain can't separate the reflections from the direct sound. Now that's, what I'm telling you is not my, sure. not my theory. Yeah. The people who have studied this, like yeah. Dr. Floyd Toole and sure. many others, have yeah. talked about this for years. Yeah. We're just taking that information and making speakers that ap apply those processes to the mat. So yeah. This is a speaker technology that'll sound great um, in a treated room, sure. but guess what, even in an untreated room. Nice. Because in an untreated room where you have all of these reflections, at least the sound power is smooth. Sure. So we put those in, in rooms that, let's say, let's just say have a high design value. In other words, the designer said, you're not doing any acoustics in here. And we're yeah. like, oh, come on, please. Right, no, yeah, you're right, not touching yeah. this model and these windows. Yeah, sure. it happens all the time. Um, and so we go, okay, well, let's try it. We put these speakers in there, sure. and they generally work better at getting around the room acoustics awesome. issues. Well, you're doing something right because I see a nice little trophy, little yeah. award here yeah. from Cedia saying you're doing some great yeah. things in the space. So I'm very proud of this award. Um, we, we actually won a CE Pro award this year. Uh, this is the first year we introduced the speaker. This actually just won an award. Yeah. Um, but they didn't listen to the speaker. They looked at the specs, they looked at the pictures, they looked at our little you know, sure. explanations, like, yeah, oh, yeah. that's cool, we'll give you right. an award. Right. Uh, we won another award from CD a few years back. They actually did come to the demo room and listen before they gave us the, the award. But this is an award after they went through and listened to all of the demos. Yeah. So a panel of judges said, let's compare these demos. Yeah. Let's go back and forth. And they went, yep, yours sounds better. That's awesome. I love this. That's I awesome. This. Yeah. Well, congratulations Thank on you. that. I've heard this personally. It's absolutely phenomenal. I would love to talk about some of the technology that you've utilized in this theater room that really makes this a one-of-a-kind experience here at Cedia 2023. Can we take our viewers to the back and talk yeah. about the rack and that technology Absolutely. that you've utilized? So we'll start off here by saying these speakers, they look a little different, mm -hmm. but where they're really different is that, that there's no crossover inside the speaker. Crossover yeah. being a board of electronics that takes normally in traditional speakers, sure. takes a signal from the power amp and separates what goes to the low, the low frequency, the woofer, and the tweeter. Yeah. So speakers for the last 70 years have been built that way and they continue to be built to it that way. Sometimes it's known as a passive crossover, sure. different words for it. These speakers don't have a crossover. There's a channel of amplification dedicated for the tweeter, yep. another one dedicated for the woofer nice. on this guy. Yeah. On this guy, there's a channel of amplification for the tweeter, this top mid-range, the bottom mid-range, and the woofer. Oh my goodness, so this yeah. is driven by an outboard, dedicated, super high-quality four-channel amp. This is, this is driven by a two-channel amp, okay. or two of them are driven by a four-channel amp. Now, what's cool here at Cedia is we've upgraded our amps 
to be able to do audio over IP. Yeah. And if we go around the back to the business end of this, I'll show you what that looks like. All right, Anthony, we are behind the scenes. This is like not what the consumers get to see, but we're bringing you guys backstage access because you shared this information with me. And I think this is crucial that my audience understand the technology that went into this room. Yeah. And you guys, man, I love what you're doing here. So walk us through what we're looking at and what's unique about this system. A absolutely. So we're in what I call the business end of all this. This is the dirty kitchen, right? Absolutely. Um, so this is the rack of gear that's driving what you just heard in there. Yeah. I'll first say that if we had done this demo five years ago, it would be two racks of gear. Sure. It'd be uh, source devices, right. surround decoder, equalizers, racks of power amps, all of which would take 50 amps or 100 amps by, from the convention center forward, which is hard to get. Correct. And expensive. Um, and expensive. And it would t probably taken us two days to wire up the, the whole rack. Sure. Instead, we've moved forward yeah. and we found ways to improve the efficiency of the whole thing. Efficiency yeah. in time, efficiency in power, and efficiency in rack space. Sure. So this is really cool. From the side, you can see it. Over here is the Kaleidoscape uh, device that's that's feeding the audio and video. Right. Um, there you go. We've got the whole playlist right in there. And the Kaleidoscape feeds an HDMI cable, which is this guy here, into the Storm Audio Evo processor. So coming in is the, the HDR video right. with the multi-channel uh, depending on the track, either 5.1 sure. or you know 30.1, right. whatever Dolby Atmos. Sure. And what's what a uh, first point of novelty today? This is the important part to me. Is normally you, uh, we're running 23 speakers, and there were 23 devices between right. the speakers and the subwoofers. Normally, in the traditional way, you'd have 24 cables of analog XLR going out of here. It'd be it's a crazy. complete mess. Yep. It would pick up noise. It yep. would pick up hum. Um, if you jostle it too much around, the connectors on the side may break, which happens all the time because sure. they're going into these Phoenix connectors. So that would be the old school way of doing it, as Correct. in last year. Yeah, absolutely. This year we're new school. Yeah. The, the 23 channels of audio that we're playing are all coming out this one cable. Right. Um, they're packetized uh, in audio over IP uh, using what's called AES-67. AES-67 is an international standard. It's been around for a while. This is not bleeding edge. It's yeah. new, but it's been around. It's been tried and tested. And those signals go out to a network switch. And this network switch is really nothing very special. It's a, a, it's a gigabit switch, which is basically all you can buy now. Right. Um, and the audio, the signal comes in to this cable right, right here. here. Yeah. This is output. If we pull this, the whole demo stops. Right, yeah. This Should is we try it? Oh, no, we're not going to touch this. Are going to do that? <laughs> um, so, that this is this content is then duplicated to the network switch right. to all of the power amps. Sure. All right, and then it comes back so around over under here there and back to the back again. And there's a series of power amps with the front channels that are hard to see here, but each one of the speakers has its own power amp, and this cable brings the networked audio and the control network okay. on this particular one, they're separate. Sure. And then these amps over here, which are for all of the surround speakers, the sides, the backs, the tops. This right here is where the audio, the digital audio comes in. Right, yeah. So what's really cool about this is the digital audio starts in the Kaleidoscape right. as mastered by the film the film director. Sure. It stays in digital audio, gets decoded. Right. You know, all the channels get separated into the bed layer and the top layers. Yeah. Stays in digital audio through the network switch into the power amp. Sure. The power amp then takes the digital audio has DSP processing for room correction. Right. You can't do any of the stuff. You can't get the sound yeah. if you don't compensate for the acoustics of the room. Sure. Don't. And um, every room is different. Every room's different. There's people I talk to who go, you know, I don't really want to do EQ. It's a bad idea. I just want to get acoustic panels from you. I sell acoustic panels and I go, sorry, dude. I would have to sell you so many acoustic panels, right. you're going to hate it. Wow. It doesn't work that way. Yeah. You really, to get good sound and get this. It's a balance of both. It's a balance of both. You want to absorb some sounds, you want to scatter out the sounds, you want to put the speakers in the right place, sure. and then you want to equalize for the room's acoustical, it's acoustical juice, the yeah. sauce that the room is adding sure. back in there. So the digital audio that comes in here first, thing that happens to it is it hits a DSP uh, processing for room correction. Yeah. Then the signal gets split into highs and lows, yep. or highs and mids and sure. lows, yep. uh, inside here, uh, doing a digital version of the old school crossover. Nice. Okay. So what we talked about, you know, old, old school right, speakers yeah. that still everybody else makes, where sure. there's a, a circuit board inside the speaker yep. that we took out, we moved it in here into right. the digital domain. Nice. 
with a 32 point, uh, actually it's 40 bit processing, very high precision, and we separate the signals very precisely between what's going to go to the tweeters and the woofers yeah. with, with very steep filters, time alignment, all this amazing stuff you can do once you're in the digital domain. Sure. Then the output of that goes to DDA converters, very high quality DDA converters, sure. to the amplifier stage, and then goes to the speakers that are right. there. So you can see the speaker connections over here, and uh, that's feeding either the, all the surround speakers through this pipe. This right. is actually what goes into the room. <laughs> Keeps um, it nice and tidy and clean. Well, I love it, it. this yeah. actually does two things. It keeps it nice and tidy, goes through the wall. But this is a cool trick for, for, for your, your viewers to know. Yeah. This is a way to maintain sound isolation. Interesting. Yeah. Check it out. I didn't know that. The wires are going in. And just the fact that it's got a turn over here, yeah. goes through the pipe, and on the other end there's another turn, sure. reduces the, the capacity of the sound in the room from coming out. There's a demo going on right now. Right, correct. Do you hear any of it there? No, no. So right? you seal that off. Yeah. And all that's going on, it's not even sealed. The wires are going into the pipe okay. and going around the corner. Right. It's kind of like you're driving your race car, which sure. I know you know a lot to do. Yeah, yeah. And suddenly you have to take a turn. You're going 150 miles per hour. So you're going to take a turn around right. around. You're down to 30, right? Uh -huh. So we've just shaved off 120 miles per hour by right. just doing this. Wow. Super simple trick. Super now, if you want to go to the next tip, you can pack this with a little fuzz right. or some putty, whatever it is. Yeah. But we don't even need to do that. Anyway, off topic, but back to yeah, our program. So uh, digital signals are going all the way through. Right. Benefit of this, why am I so excited? Yeah. I don't sell network switches. Right. I don't sell network cables. Sure. I'm excited because now we're not picking up noise. Right. Uh, from this. This is a very noisy environment. Yeah. You have all these products that are spraying out radio frequency interference, all this stuff. Sure. And in the analog domain, all those cables would pick up a little noise. Yeah. Gone. Yeah. We're not propagating ground loops because in a traditional uh, system, this product has its own ground. The rack has its own ground. Right. You connect the shields from here into that. There is a different ground potential and then another one, another one. You end up with, with hum. It goes yeah. And then you spend three days chasing it down, figuring Longer. out what are you going to do. It's forever. Sometimes you have to put these hum, yeah. these hum busters, these extra yeah. little boxes in the way that stop the Cheater. hum. Yeah. Little yeah. cheaters. Yeah. And the more you put, the more trouble actually starts to develop. Yeah. The other thing is um, that the analog connections are a little difficult to maintain. They're sort of fragile. Sure. If you look inside an XLR cable, you open it up, you've got basically a 30 gauge wire. Yeah. Very really sensitive small. to jostling. Yeah, yeah. Sure. So imagine you had 24 wires in here, all with these little small things. You put your hand in here to right. go do you some maintenance, yeah. you're going to break one. Yeah. So, and you don't know that you've done that. And you don't know that you've done that. If you, on the balance line, if you just pull one, there's still sound going out. And you've, but you've either lost 6 dB of sound if you pulled the negative, yeah. but if you pulled the positive by mistake, guess what happens? The signal's now out of phase, it's out of polarity. Oh, so man. that speaker that you just pulled sure. without realizing yeah. it is a little quieter, but it's out of phase with everybody wow. else. Bad. Yeah, yeah. It's a nightmare. So this is fixing a lot this of is, those problems. This is phenomenal. This yeah. is technology advancing yeah. in the home theater space. Yeah. I yeah. Love so, it. We're the first people to try to pull this off at yeah. a show. We actually have been doing this this year in consumers, both consumers and pro locations. Sure. We also do some, some professional screening rooms, yeah. film studios. Um, but we're applying this more and more into home environments. Yeah. And we're, this is the first time we're, we're trying this in a show and I'm really happy because sure. in this environment, we're, like I said earlier, we're just really camping. We're here yeah. just for a few days and we're sure. gonna strike yeah. tonight. This was a really quick setup. Sure. Right. So, I mean, you can understand that. Click, click, yep. click, 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 click. I probably spend more time trying to dress this with zip ties than it took to just connect the yeah, whole thing. Yeah, sure. So this is exciting to me. Uh, it's more error proof, better quality sound, less chance of failures, less noise. Okay. This, this is the way to go. Yeah. Well, Anthony, you have designed and implemented and executed an absolutely phenomenal system in here which we got the experience earlier incredibly immersive great great tactile bass i mean i'm feeling in my chest music also sounds phenomenal we heard yeah. some concert demos yeah if somebody wanted to design a system and they're like hey i don't know what i'm doing but i hope you can tell anthony totally knows what he's doing you've been around the block many many years you've heard countless systems you've designed countless systems and now you're like I think I can do something really unique and, and special in this space, and now you're designing your own speakers. So if right. they wanted to connect with you, what's the best way? Um, just reach out to us at, at uh, 
At the, on your it, website? Or on the you... website, there's a contact link. So the website is grimanisystems.com, yeah. or if you're lazy, you can also go to grimani.tv. Okay. Uh, and uh, you know, you'll put the spelling somewhere, but sure. it's G-R-I-M-A-N-I yeah. uh, systems, or grimani.tv. Uh, grimani there's an info line on there. And just go, hey, I'm interested. Awesome. What, what uh, we have, let, let's just say we have two modes of operation. You can just buy gear from us. Yeah. Um, okay. And go. I'm, I know what I want. Right, I sure. don't need your help. Sure. And you know, here's my purchase order. Yeah. We'll we'll trade speakers and amps for money. We, yeah. You know, we're that sure. guy at the street corner that say we'll work for money. Right. Sure. Um, I said speakers and amps because yeah. because our speakers all all the pricing right. everything yeah, is based sure. with an amplifier. Okay. Um, or there's another mode of operation that goes. I don't know what yeah. to do. Help me out. Then go. Then Here's send my money. us. You tell me what to buy. You tell me based on my spec. Right. You tell me how big of a room to build. Right. And your team can do all right. of that. Um, most of our clients come to us already with a footprint for the room. Yeah. I'd say 98 percent of the That's time. Right. I'm quick at doing statistics. Yeah. You know, 98 percent of the time, somebody goes, "I am doing a room. Here's my plan. My architect has said it's here. It's about this big. Now what? Yeah. So we'll study it just like we did for this room." No, uh, no surprises, good predictability. Sure. We'll study it, we'll, we'll go, yeah, we gotta do this. This speaker will work, that speaker will work, this acoustic treatment, put the seat here, put that projector, put the screen. Yeah. Um, we'll produce the plan, we'll supply the speakers, you'll install it or your integrator will install it, and we'll, we'll come in at the end to calibrate it. Sure. That's, that's on, the, on the higher end of our service, yeah. where we'll, we'll design, supply the acoustics, supply the speakers, maybe even do a side visit to supervise a construction sure. along the way yeah. and come in at the end to make it sing just like you heard here. I love it. Anthony, it has been a true pleasure. You Thank are you. a wealth of knowledge. You're so fun just to hang out and listen to. I can sit here and listen to your knowledge and your expertise in this space. Guys, I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you did, definitely reach out to Anthony, his team. If you're looking to build a home theater or if you're just looking for some awesome, awesome home theater speakers, subwoofers, amplifiers, or two-channel setup. I'll have all your information down in the description below. But guys, I hope you've enjoyed this series at Cedia 2023. We've got more content, more videos for you. You can check out the whole playlist right here. Have a great week. God bless, and we will catch you in the next video.